Choosing the wrong agent can end your career before it even begins, but how do you know who to trust? There's a secret I'll share in this video. If you're watching this video, you're probably going to be falling under one of three categories. You're either going to be a pro player, a semi-pro player, or an amateur player. So if you're watching this video, you're landing in one of these three categories. And the three of them, when looking for an agent, are going to have different hurdles in the way and essentially will be needing to avoid different things before you'll be able to select the right agent for you. But before we start, why should you be listening to me? Well, my name is Alan Derrett. I'm a full-time football agent and the co-founder of Elite Football. We're currently Australia's largest agency and we work with over 25 professional clubs overseas across Europe, UAE and South America. We've helped hundreds of players with player representation and are currently the largest agency in Australia. So if you're looking for an agency, I might be able to help you. Link in the description below. You can hop online and have a chat with one of my support agents. So you fall under one of these three categories. I'll start with the pro players. Ideally, the three of you, our goal is when selecting an agent is because we want to find the right club. So the goal is the club, right? And we all want to land here, the three of us. With a professional player, it's going to be much easier because essentially what you're trying to do is you're trying to find an agency that works with professional players that has the contacts that you sort of desire club wise. And you know, you'd presumably be willing to risk your 10% wage, 5%, 3%, whatever it is, a bit of your transfer fee to work with this agency to be able to get you across the line, right? So if you're a pro player, it's going to be easier to find these agencies to work for because you're more of a sure thing, right? You don't have to pay the money up front. You don't have to sort of give anything before you get because if you're a pro player, if you're already playing Div 1, Div 2, maybe you represent your country, it's easier for an agency to expose you to someone else and try and get you something, right? Now, that being said, pro player is, is going to be more direct, right? Say the agent is here. It's going to be more direct direct to be able to get that club, right? The only thing, if you're a pro player, you're probably not going to be, be watching this video, I can't imagine is, I would suggest that the only thing stopping you from this agent is making sure that this agent has the contacts that you are looking for, right? Because I actually get messages a lot of the time from pro players, players that are actually representing countries, and they are looking for a very specific thing. A lot of them are sort of, you know, a, a little bit older, maybe 28, 30. These are not players that you're probably thinking of, like it's not your Mbappe's, your Neymar's, your really big star name players but there is a lot of players that are playing professional that maybe don't have that many followers maybe only have like 50,000 followers or something on social media they're players that you probably have never heard about but they're still playing div one football right they're still playing pro and when they get to sort of that older age it, it starts to become harder to sell them and they essentially are looking for agencies that work in maybe I don't know your UAE right maybe Asia places where they could still sign play the top level and still make 150 50,000 euros a year, maybe a bit less, maybe 80, 90,000 euros, something where it's still a good wage, they're still competing, and it's happy days for both parties, right? Unfortunately, with my agency at the moment, we don't really do that, so I'm not currently looking for those type of players, but there definitely is other agencies that that's all they do. That's the exact type of player that they want, is players that have already got runs on the board, they're already Div 1, they're already Div 2, they've got years of experience, they've got this whole CV. It's easier to sell those players to clubs right and there's agencies that they, that's all they focus on when working within the transfer windows and players so that's what i would say if you are having to be a pro player and you're watching this video those are the type of agents i'd be looking out for is don't just reach out to, to anyone because everyone's gonna say yes they can help you but really at the end of the day not everyone actually can help you and it's going to be those type of agencies that will be likely to help so now semi pro player this is roughly where it starts to get a bit tricky but this is where you start to need to avoid a lot of things when looking for an agent now, pro player, easy, it's direct. You reach out to people, they wanna work with you. If they get you something, then you sign a contract and presumably get the deal, right? Semi-pro player, this is when it's a player that maybe they're playing MPL at a high level, maybe they're getting a bit of pocket money, you know, on the weekends, that type of semi-pro where it's maybe Div 4 or 5 or something in Europe. This is tricky, right? Because this, instead of being direct, the, the pathway kind of starts to look like this, you know? It's sort of avoiding a few little obstacles in the way. These obstacles, in my opinion, the main ones would be, the first one would be hefty agent fees. Now, because you're not a sure thing there's going to be agencies that are going to take advantage of this and there is agencies that specifically work with semi-pro players and they are super dodgy because what they do is they try and take a huge percentage of you you know because you you essentially can't bring in that much money for them what they'll do is instead of taking you know anywhere from one to ten percent 
of your future wage, they'll make you sign a contract that says, well, you got to give me 50% of your wage, right? Of whatever I can get you, contract, transfer fees, whatever. And 50% is huge because what happens when you are only getting 30,000 euros or something in a contract? Yeah, you're happy you got a team that you're playing for, but all of a sudden you now owe an agent 15,000 euros. And so what happens is you can't survive off 15,000. Potentially you could have survived with 30 and just played football while you're there, but that's just not enough to live. So a lot of players that are in this zone and have dodgy agents that do this, they end up having to work like a part-time job. They end up having to work and do something else on the side while they're playing. So it just complicates everything for them. So never sign something dodgy like that. No one should be taking 50% of anything. The, the work we do while it's valuable, it is not worth 50%, right? It's literally the sharks of the football world is, is how I like to explain this bit to avoid. The other thing I've seen commonly done with semi-pro players is, I'm just labeling it brand cut, but basically what it is, is there's some agencies or some agents that they know that they potentially aren't good enough to get them to a desirable club, or potentially they know that they can't make money off getting to the club because they know that the, what the player is gonna be getting paid is, is just too small, right? And so what they do is they make you sign away your licensing right. And so they might say, yeah, it's only a two year contract for the thing, I'm only taking 10%, but in that same contract, they're making you sign away your brand, your likeness for five years. It doesn't seem like a big deal when you don't have any sponsors behind you or whatever, but if for whatever reason, you don't even work with this agent anymore and you go somewhere else and you work with me or whoever, and then you go big, then you go to the Div 1 or whatever, and now there's actually is sponsorships that wanna work with you, whatever, they're gonna be able to take everything that you sort of work for in that sponsorship. Like there's, there's sometimes they put 50% cut, sometimes they do 80%, whatever it is, under the presumption that they're gonna bring in you, they're gonna, sorry, bring you sponsorships or bring you brand deals, it's just not gonna happen. The stuff that you're gonna get when you're a semi-pro player is like a few hundred dollars per post or something. It's gonna be very minimal, even if that. And they know that potentially they it's easier for them to get you stuff like that. They can take those bigger cuts and it's an easier hedge of a bet for them when they're actually not good at their job to be able to bring companies in and have them sponsor some stuff and they just take a big cut of that. It's more assured for them. The same thing, it's still dodgy agents that you're trying to look out for. So on this likeness brand thing, that agencies do. I've actually had players come to me before and present to me contracts that were wanting them to sign like 50% over to them for five years, which I think is ridiculous before you even present any work. Like the way we work with my company, my agency, is until we get someone a scholarship proposal or a contract on the table, no one has to sign any paperwork with us. Like we're confident enough to know that once we can get it there, then we present the, the contract for the player to sign. Now, a lot of agents are worried that the player's just gonna sign the contract with the club and then not sign with them, which is why they present it before. And this is actually something that I used to do when I first started as an agent. But as you get bigger and as you get better with your connections and when you start to only work with clubs that you trust and you have a good relationship with, I know that if I were to pull the plug on something, even if a club offered a contract, if I would just say, nah, this player hasn't signed with me, they would reject anything off the table until the player signs with me because that's the relationship that you build over time. So obviously that's not something I'd like to do, but we, this is the reason why players don't have to sign anything with us on paper until we actually present them something, right? So I'd be very weary of people that do make you sign stuff first because potentially they're just not big enough. They're probably just not strong enough actually in their area and they're just worried about you, you know, doing something wrong to them in the future or whatever. But usually they're people that are probably going to be doing something wrong to you in the future. So that's what I would say is don't sign any contracts. Now for the amateur player, this is going to be the most most things to avoid. Unfortunately, you guys are at the most risk when it comes to the football world. And I've got videos on it that explain it. I put a pop tag on this video, avoid these three football scams. That is a video I think everyone should watch regardless. But for amateur players, your pathway is gonna look a bit more like this before you can get there. And so when you're an amateur, the first things you need to be avoiding is this. So the obvious stuff, and I've spoken about this before, is you need to be avoiding straight off the bat, tours, academies, 
tournaments and experiences. Now, why? As an amateur player, you essentially are the easiest target for people to get into the football industry, right? You gotta think of it from the other side. If you're someone that wants to become an agent or you're someone that wants to work within the football industry, what is the lowest cost barrier of entry to start working in the field? The easiest thing to do is to work with kids, to train them, to start an academy, to develop something and do like a UK tour, to sell an experience. Why? Because you don't need to actually do any work to do that. There's no barrier, there's no cost of entry, there's no barrier to enter that, right? That market. Anyone can go do a little course and become a coach overnight. Anyone can sell an experience because they're not the one even offering that experience. They're just getting the people and convincing them to go overseas and do a tour. Anyone can put a team in for a tournament over in Spain or Portugal, right? And have get a team here and send them over um, to do that tournament. So usually it's the two week type of things that are the red flags because no one's gonna offer you anything just seeing, you know, one or two games. It's incredibly unrealistic to think that's gonna happen. Same with these experiences, same with these tours. It's just the, lo the lowest barrier of entry, right? Like all the people that do that, it's the easiest thing. You don't have to put in the hours and the work to actually make connections and try and actually get something for players, like to actually change lives. It's the easiest way to make money, which whatever, to each their own. But that's why I'm completely against it because a lot of times players go and do these things and they think that there's gonna be something at the end of the road, but there never is. And so not against players doing it if you just want experience, but usually it's an experience is, is never really enough and you can get a good experience by going to a real place that actually wants to see you. So off the bat, you have to already avoid a bunch of people because the pro players aren't even gonna pay attention to this. The semi pro players are not gonna pay attention to this either because they know what they want, but where semi-pro and amateur actually connect is on a point about here, which is what I like to call fake agents. These could probably be the worst out of the lot, right? Because these are people that sometimes they have a bunch of followers on social media. Like I know people that have over a million followers on Instagram and they're fake agents. I know people that, you know, have over 100,000 followers on TikTok and they're fake agents, right? There's people following me that are agents that are fake. And it grinds my gears because I was once a player and I was once a player that got scammed and so all this stuff rings pretty true to me and it hits home because the ones that are selling you the dream the ones that are promising you stuff or telling they can give you direct thing oh I can't guarantee anything but like here's the thing they're the worst of the lot right? Because they know very well what they're doing. And a lot of the times the way they do things is, you know, they have got their own residencies. They put like a bunch of players in like a, a one room, you know, you got three, four, five players in one room. All that sort of stuff is dodgy. They charge you an arm and a leg for like a few weeks, a month trial or whatever. It's just not going to happen. Even a month, it's it's too short of a time, right? For, for a club to make a decision, but it's hard for people to understand that. And so these are the, the worst ones that you have to try and avoid. Now, the secret, how can you avoid all this, these agents or whatever? The number one thing I would recommend for people to do is to look at their social media, do a little bit of research, right? Have the conversation with them or their team, whatever it is, and then go and look at the plays that they're promoting. Look at the plays that they're promoting that they've signed. Look at the plays that they, you know, do they have success stories? Do they not? Okay, have a chat. And you know what? A lot of times, not everyone's gonna be happy with the service. I'm sure that I have people that, you know, well, this is just how it goes, right? When I get someone a contract or a scholarship, I'm their favorite person. I'm you know, the best person ever, right? And then there's a lot of times when players, the majority that don't get something that may not feel the same way about me, right? There's always that middle ground. But as long as you're reaching out to people and there's a minority, you know, that might not speak, that are speaking bad about this person and not a majority, because if the people they're promoting on their website or on their page or whatever, and you're reaching out to them, if they're not even on their DMs telling you, yeah, it's legit, right? Which is what most of my players have to message people all the time. They tell me they get message people all the time. Message the players because if you message five players and three of them tell you it's legit one of you tells you yeah it was all right and the other one tells you it's a scam it's probably fine but if you message five players and four of them tell you it's a scam well then it's probably a scam right and that's something you should be avoiding so just that little bit of effort i think goes a long way when trying to pick and it's something that players don't think about just that little thing could save you from thousands of dollars and a bunch of heartache um especially for the semi-pro and amateur player if you learned something in this video if you could leave a like or even consider subscribing it's free and you can always change your mind i would very much appreciate it and it will allow me to keep making more of these free value content for you guys